Today, I have three of the most advanced bed cooling and heating devices out there. This is the BedJet, the 8 Sleep Pod, and the Sleep Me Dock Pro. I'm gonna show what the things I really like about them, the things I absolutely do not, and which one is actually worth your money. Discount codes and links are down below. This is the BedJet Single Zone Queen, so it's gonna be half the bed where you can adjust the temperature for cold or hot. I'm gonna show you the unboxing of this BedJet to see what's in the box. Let's open this sucker up first. It's gonna give us some installation instructions on the back here and kind of what the front looks like over here. But I think this is where it pumps hot or cold air through to cool or heat your bed. Oh, kind of the instructions. So this should have like air vents. I guess it's just like a half queen sheet. <laughs> How does this fit? Okay, this is the entire queen. It looks like we have a this side down and then pull it apart open it up, wrap it around and lock it in. The little device will go inside of here and pump air in, hot or cold air through this piece. Cooling and warming for the entire queen bed. User manual for the Bed Jet 3. Comes with the app and a remote. Ooh, that's kind of nice. Bed Jet. <laughs> oh, here's the vent. So it's got an opening on this side for the air to flow out and I assume this is where the air flows in and this is gonna be leaned right up against the bed, kind of like this, where it's gonna pump air in. I assume this is the nozzle holder. Ooh, it comes with a little remote. It's like a fancy TV remote. Batteries included. Oh, look at that, that's the screen. So we'll sync it to the device once it's set up. Here's the actual hardware of BedJet. Woo, this is it. This is the BedJet heating cooling unit. You can use this for both sides of the bed, or you could buy one of these for each side of the bed. So you do have to have this kind of like below your bed. It looks like we got some Bluetooth, power buttons, lights, low power mode, a USB port, the vent for the tubing. It's got some grills on this side. It says bed jet over here. A power cable that sticks out. So this is, looks like a carbon filter, which you probably have to replace over time because it'll get dusty with all the airflow. And then finally, this is the pipe. Looks like it's, whoa! It extends and then it kind of rounds whatever shape you need it. So you would have this connect to that and then go onto the bed. <laughs> that is the bed jet unboxing. This is the Sleep Me Doc Pro Chili Sleep. They keep changing the name, who knows? But this is the Doc Pro version. I've had this for a while. My friend actually has this as well. Just because it was a cheaper version of the H Sleep, it is a water cooling mattress cover and heating as well. But this is a half queen. It's cheaper because it doesn't cover the entire bed. I've also had the Uler in the past. That one just was not that good. But today we're gonna set this up. It comes with a cover. So this is the half queen cover and it's gonna have tubing, two tubes to carry out water. If you want a full queen, you're gonna have to buy two units. So you need two power outlets, two units that are controlled separately. Uh, it just becomes a little bit complicated. But what I do like about this one is these strings right here. So you will slide this underneath the mattress to minimize movement. But one of the downsides to that is if you move around a lot in your sleep, this can move on the bed a lot. So I do move around a lot. And I notice like, you know, sometimes it'll scrunch up, things can move around. So it's not perfect, but it does the job. So let's lay this out here and run some tests and see how well, this is heat, cool, noise, light, all the stuff. Let's run the tests. All right, now to fully set up the bed jet, we're going to go ahead and slide this underneath our mattress. So this is supposed to be adjustable if your mattress is too short, too tall. But honestly, our mattress might be too tall. Squeeze this on here. Oh, no, it works perfectly. Just the right height. Slide this onto here. This is gonna go all the way around. And the cloud sheet goes underneath your blankets but on top of your fitted sheet. And you're gonna to wanna to cover the entire thing. But now on this side of the bed, like if you're rolling on the side of the bed, it's gonna feel weird. So the other option would be to put it on the tail of the bed. But we decided to put it here. Um, and then we can figure out where the best place to be. Our bed frame is a little too short. So it's definitely not going to fit underneath. But let's turn it on. Bam, now it should inflate. Ideally, you want your blankets and comforters over this with your fitted sheet underneath it. 
and then you would sleep underneath this. The only issue is I use a weighted blanket. So if you have a weighted blanket, it's gonna push down on this and it's gonna constrict airflow and it's gonna be hard to feel the temperature. But it already feels cold. Okay, click to begin. Name your device. Nope. Leave the beeps on. Light ring, we'll just leave it on, but I probably want it off. Only one bed jet. No. Internal clock, it is 10. Cool. Oh. Okay. Time. Temperature. Off. So the Sleep Me device comes, because these are water-cooled devices now, you do need to buy your own distilled water. Some of them do recommend hydrogen peroxide, whereas they have kind of their own system cleaner that you can put in. And they typically recommend putting one of these every like three months, uh, as well as you have to change the water out or add water. One of the downsides of the Dock Pro is the water tank is really small. Let's see how powerful it is, because the one thing that I did like about the Dock Pro is this cools and heats the fastest, and it just feels the most extreme out of all of the active cooling devices I've ever tested. First thing we wanna do is plug this bad boy in. So here we go, we're gonna add some water. If you don't use distilled water or and or hydrogen peroxide slash these system cleaners, there just is a likelihood that the minerals are going to start to build up in the system and the pipes and the tubing and it can just damage it over time. So there's just the reason to use this. It's, it's nice and it's more valuable to protect your system long term. The lid, just never seems to fit on perfectly. So I don't know what it is about this lid, but it's extremely hard to get off. What the fuck? Oh! Other than the heating cooling strength, which is really good, everything else sucks about this thing. If you need to refill this once a week and you're struggling to get this lid off, it can be a bit challenging. With the cleaner, it gets all slippery as well. So I just recommend don't use the lid. And then what, Doc Pro, when the new companies that bought them out, they were like, hey, we'll pay you $1,000 if you don't say anything bad about us. And I was like, what? So just be careful that a lot of these companies are gonna pay influencers, creators online to say certain things. And I'm never gonna be one of those people. Uh, I do have affiliate links and discount codes down below and I do make money if you click that link. But I'm comparing all these systems and I wanna provide the best authentic advice that I possibly can with my experience, just so you can buy the best device for you and you're not getting influenced by, you know, these companies are paying certain people to say certain things. So just know that I will never ever take money to say something unless it's a sponsored ad and I'll tell you that, hey, this is sponsored, I'm getting paid to say this. So now we're gonna plug the cover in here. There's two tubes that plug in the back. It's just gonna, there's a power cable and this plugs right in. What I do really like about the Dock Pro that none of the other devices have is hardware buttons on the unit itself. So we're gonna press power. And now it should start to circulate the water through the tubing. It's now working. It looks like I'm able to set the temperature. Some of these active cooled mattresses is now pumping water at a certain temperature through the tubing inside this cover. There is a risk, it turned off again. Oh, it's out of water. So we already ran out of distilled water, but there is a risk that this could get punctured and it could wet your mattress. So anytime you're using the Doc Pro or the Age Sleep, I highly recommend getting a water cover for your mattress. So in case your bed gets all wet, you wanna protect your mattress. But yeah, you'll hear the, the first time when it needs to get the air bubbles out. Um, and they both use slightly different technologies in terms of like, are they straight lines, are they circles of how the cooling feels? And there is a little bit of a texture on top of this cover as well. It's kind of like this mesh feeling. But I think the water cooling ones are way more powerful and you feel them more than the air cooling on the bed jet. So as I rub my hands against this, I can feel the tubing a little bit. Like I can see the tube is like right here, there's a circle right here. So there's definitely a little sensation of the mesh as well as the tubing. And once you put a sheet over it, you might feel it less, but there's a very high likelihood that with these types of mattress covers, you can feel a little bit of that tubing. But I do like that because it just feels like cooler. You can flip it over if it's too much, um, but this will give you the maximum heat and cooling effect. But there is a little bit of sensation that you might have to get used to or just allow your body to forget that it's there. It's like when you wear a watch for the first time, it's like bothers you, but then you forget that your watch is actually there. All right, looks like the gun shows about 75, 76. 
Bedjet doesn't offer sleep tracking, Eight Sleep and Sleep Me do. This is their Sleep Insights uh, sleep tracker thing. It kind of goes underneath your sheets, but on top of the cooling device. It's just another device you have to plug in actually. Um, and it's got a hardware unit here with micro USB. Um, and this will essentially sit by your bedside. You'll plug this into another outlet or USB port um, and you'll sleep on top of this. I've noticed that this does move around a lot when I sleep as well as I can kind of feel the bumps and the wires a little bit. So that's just another thing to keep in mind. But this is a sleep tracker that you can also put on top of the cooling device. So now you get sleep tracking and heating and cooling, but it's two different things and they're separate. I'm not the biggest fan of this. I don't think it's worth it, but this is available. And now we are going to do a temperature test with all three devices. We just started the timer. We're gonna test how long it takes to get to the max temperature. And then we're gonna see how long it takes to get to the max cool temperature. So we're running it right now. We've got thermal cameras as well as a thermal gun to see if we can get to the max 104 degrees Fahrenheit on this. All right, as you can see here, if I tilt down a little bit, that's where the bed jet is. It's pumping hot air into this cover. And because that the cover is plugged into the bottom right, the hottest temperature is gonna be here. Whereas like on the corners, you don't have as hot of a temperature, but I'm hoping slowly over time that it's going to achieve its max temperature of 104 in all areas. And I think the challenge is, is, is the temperature gonna be the same all the way throughout, or is it just gonna be a hot spot in the corner, whereas the other spots are just a couple degrees cooler. All right, according to the bed jet, it says it's kind of achieved the temperature. It just dropped, it, used to, it said 104, 103, now it's at 101, but it looks like it's achieved it in about five minutes. So it heats up pretty quickly. I can see that if I point it right at the event, it's gonna be the hottest at 94. But then if I point it to an air gap away, it's like 82. So it's not really hot unless you're really close to the air vent at the front. So we're gonna start the timer. We're gonna turn it on. We're going to max heat. Let's see how long it takes to go from 71 to, looks like 115 is the peak. Let the games begin. All right, so here you can see that the um, coils here are circular. So it's going to be pumping water in those circles up that bottom tube right there. And for the most part, it's, it's red and it's hot. Obviously around the edges, like it's not gonna get perfectly to the edges. There's a little bit of a cutoff. And then there is some uh, corners where it's just not as hot as the other areas. But for the most part, it's pretty warm evenly throughout. So it's pretty good in that sense. If we measure this water, 61. And then the vents, 64. Oh, let's see the tubing, 71. Oh yeah, it's pumping out cold air because it's heating. So the cold air is coming out at 58. The sleep me knocker on the right is, is heating up. On the left side, we're about to start the eight sleep. So that will slowly start to heat up, but this is the before. It's been almost 40 minutes and the Doc Pro is at 105, so it's still 10 degrees away from its maximum temperature. So we're gonna start the eight sleep one as well. We are going to hit a lap button here. So at 23 minutes, we're gonna go temperature on the eight sleep, turn it all the way to hot. It goes up to 110 degrees Fahrenheit, so five degrees less than the Sleep Me Doc Pro. And it's only doing the left side. You can see only the left side so that the right side is not impacted. Cool, so now you can see the Sleep Me Doc Pro on the right is, is heating up. On the left side, we're about to start the eight sleep. So we are at max temperature. I'm gonna feel, wow, it is warm. Oh, it's warm, it feels cozy. It's like kind of like cloudy. There's a lot of air in between, obviously, and the air is gonna be seeping through the sheet a little bit. But just going underneath this, I can feel the heat. This feels very interesting. If you're not using a weighted blanket, this can be a very good affordable option. Wow, this is really nice. You can feel the heat. It's not extremely warm, but it's definitely warm. Good for those winter days because it's snowing outside right now. All right, now we are at the max temp, so I'm gonna set it to cool. Let's see how long it takes to get to the coldest temperature from its max heat. We got 66, can the temperature go any lower? 66 Fahrenheit is the minimum. Okay, so it took about four to five minutes to get to the cool temperature, at least that's what it says on the remote. So the air coming out is 68 degrees from this. And if I move it up to the top, we're gonna get about 68, 69. So this one's more evenly distributed, it looks like, on a cold temperature. So it's cold. Let's go test and see how it feels. <clears throat> okay, it's not as extreme as the hot temperature was. It is definitely cold, but I've used the Sleep Me Doc Pro and the Eight Sleep, and this is subtle. It's, I don't think the temperatures feel as extreme, but you can still feel that it's slightly cold. Definitely a great budget option. If you're trying to save money, you want it for one side of the bed or the entire bed for one temperature, this is probably like a good way to save money, but still get that temperature regulation. Now I'm a violent sleeper. Let's see what happens if I 
kick my feet. So like this, ow, ow, you could hit your foot on it. So this is something to keep in mind. I do move my legs a lot. I guess it is possible if you do this a lot that you could unplug it off of the unit and you'd have to replug it back in. So keep that in mind, but it's easy. It doesn't break. It just kind of unplugs. If you do plan to buy any of these active cooling devices, use the links and discount codes down below. They help support the channel. I do make money off of those, but we try to be as unbiased as possible. So if you buy one, it helps the channel. Pause. Uh, we actually ran the test a little bit wrong. So we're going to do it again a second time for the sleep me and the eight sleep. You actually want to have a sheet on the bed or a person sleeping on the bed because if you don't, they're going to struggle to cool. So the reason it took us so long is because we didn't have a cover and all the temperature and the heat, cool air was escaping. So this time we're gonna run it again. We're gonna cover both sides and see if it goes faster. What are our current variables for this science experiment? 62 degrees Fahrenheit inside, as well as 26% humidity. I only turned on the left side of the eight sleep, so the right side is off. And on the right side, we have the sleep me. They're both currently set to 69 degrees. And we're gonna turn that down to the lowest temperature, see how long it takes, and then we're gonna turn it to the highest temperature and see how long that takes. Now we're gonna test the surface temperature with this temperature gun to see what it gets us. Yep, they both feel pretty cool right now. Let's test the part I didn't contaminate. Eight sleep is showing 68.7 on the surface temperature with a fitted sheet on top of it. Sleep me is also showing oh, 69, 70, maybe a little bit warmer, one degree difference on with the fitted sheet on as well. So this is how we're gonna run the experiment. Now that we know this current temperature step is I'm gonna cover it with this overhead sheet. And just to be extra safe, we're actually going to put a weighted blanket on it as well. I think the more sheets you have, the faster the temperature change can occur. Now we are going to come here and go to eight sleep. We're gonna turn the temperature all the way down to 55. We're gonna go to sleep me. We're gonna turn the temperature down all the way to low, which is like 55, 54. We're gonna go to clock, start a stopwatch, and now we're gonna wait. So it's currently 71 now, you know, there's a little bit of a 72, it's going up for some reason. And the eight sleep is at 70, 69. So they're pretty close in temperature. Now we're gonna see how fast it drops to 55. Let the race begin. It took the eight sleep about 15, 14 minutes to get to this lowest temperature of 55 degrees. It's currently at that temp. If I go to the sleep me, for some reason it's having some issues. It's like increasing. It was at 58 and now it's 61 and now it's 64. I don't know what's going on. They both took 45 minutes last time. Now the eight sleep took 15 minutes. Sleep me is just giving me some problems. Now that we're at the lowest temperatures, we're going to increase it from here and see how long it takes to get to the max temperature. Start the clock. So now we're at the max temperatures for both the sleep me and the eight sleep. Or they're both supposed to be at the lowest temperature. For some reason, the sleep me just wasn't hitting its temperature. Eight sleep is saying 63, 62 with the, with the cover on. Doc Pro, 65, 63. So they're both pretty close. I think that, that just shows how important it is to have the sheets on top. So very close in temperatures right there. You can see how the blue there means cold and the orange means warm. All right, so we have the covers on. They're both heating to the highest temperature possible. We've got a clock running here as well. We're about two minutes in. Now we're just gonna wait. We'll see you back when at least one of them has hit their peak temperature. Once again, these are the ambient temperatures. Uh, we've officially gotten very close to their max temps. Uh, this is two degrees away from 115 and this is two degrees away from 110. So they're only two degrees Fahrenheit away from their potentially max temperatures right now. I'm gonna say that's good enough. Uh, it's been almost 45 minutes, so it does take quite a bit of time to heat. Uh, it is 62 degrees Fahrenheit in the ambient temperature of this room. Let's do the gun and the thermal camera. Oh wow, this feels warm right here. This feels warm, so it's definitely capturing and keeping the heat inside of there. Let's measure. Sleep me, it's giving us about 95 degrees Fahrenheit on the sheet. Eight sleep, it's giving us about 86 degrees Fahrenheit on the sheet. And remember, this was showing 108. This was showing 113 on the dock temperature. You can see the max temperatures underneath the sheets. This is the eight sleep, it's showing about 81 on the thermal camera. And then if I come to the sleep me, it's showing about 90 degrees on the thermal camera. So it's a 10 degree difference in terms of the surface temperature. How's it feel? It's like a sauna. <laughs> it's so warm. And now we'll do a power consumption test with all three devices. All right, this is the Bedjet kilowatt. So 36.6 watts, about half an amp at full fan speed, at full cooling speed. So what if we go to heat? Holy shit, did the watch just change? Eight amps, 600 watts. Now it's playing 11 amps and 1100 watts. Turbo will get us up to 1500 watts. It's crazy how cooling uses a lot less energy. 
the Dock Pro. It's currently off, but it's still drawing power to connect the Wi-Fi and stuff. So we see 2.4 watts, 0 0.09 amps. So if we go ahead and turn it on. That should boot up. Almost two amps for heat, 212 watts. What if we go to cold? Oh wow, cold is always less energy. One amp and 122 watts. If we turn it off. 0.09. So this is what it's gonna to use to connect to Bluetooth and Wi-Fi so you can control it via the app. All right, so this is eight sleep. It's currently heating. It's using about 120 watts and about one amp, which is surprisingly not a lot. Let's see what happens when we put on cold. So I guess cooling is a lot more efficient than heating. We're just seeing, all right, let's switch back to hot. So that's probably the most energy efficient option out of all the three too. All right, this is the bed jet noise test. All right, so we just ran the noise test on the bed jet, and it's like what, 30 to 40 decibels is kind of like silence in the room. We're hitting 70 decibels at around 100%, and then around 60, it's 75, 50-ish, um, and as low as 50 decibels at 25% when the fan is running. So it is quite loud when this thing is running. It just depends on how much of a performance level you want. All right, these are the noise levels for the Chili Sleep Dock Pro. It's obviously 70 decibels when I'm talking. All right, this is what it's gonna sound like when I turn it on. All right, this is what it's gonna sound like when it's on the tube. All right, this is the eight sleep noise test. So that, what that's crazy is the eight sleep is the quietest hands down. It was like 40 decibels. I think the Doc Pro got up to like 50 maybe. And then the bed jet could get as loud as 70. That's insane. Eight sleep is hands down the quietest out of all three. Now, I've been using the HC for about three years now. The Dock Pro I use for about a year, and the Bed Jet I'm still relatively new to. But from my experience testing these so far, the Bed Jet is going to hit its temperatures the fastest out of the three. The HC has the least amount of maintenance in terms of refilling the water. It's the quietest. So, in terms of a unit that will stay on your bed, not move around, it requires the least effort to get going. The scheduling is super easy, the autopilot. It is the most expensive and has a membership cost. But in terms of least effort required to have a operational tool. That's probably the best one. The Dock Pro, it's just the water, I don't know, it evaporates or something happens, you have to refill it with distilled water all the time. And that just makes it almost unusable. So for me, if you're trying to save money, you want a active bed cooling or heating device, I would go with the bed jet as the cheapest option. And if you're someone where money is not really a problem for you, I think the eight sleep is the best option. Both of these will be custom to whatever mattress that you have. You don't need to buy a new mattress. You just buy the cover, the sheet, whatever it is that goes on top of that. The eight sleep is only one unit, whereas the Dock Pro and the bed jet will need two units if you want to have two sides of the bed. The bed jet's around $400. The Dock Pro is like 800 to 1000 and the eight sleep is on a little over two thousand dollars depending on the bed size that you have remember discount code Shervin. links are all down below they help support the channel turn your notifications subscribe to see future videos I love testing all the health and fitness gadgets tools out there I want to see what's the best I want to show you what's authentic and real and if you haven't yet go watch my video where I tried three of the best smart rings out there and I share my favorite linked right here